John Paulson wanted to short, uh, he wanted to short subprime. Um, he thought that the housing bubble was coming to an end and he wanted to short subprime. And here's how he did it. He bought a He bought CDS on uh, residential mortgage-backed securities, actually on CDO tranches of mortgage-backed securities. But the point is that he is buying insurance, okay, on the value of some securities without owning the securities. Okay. So that if the securities fall in price um, or if they default, okay, he gets, he gets paid. That, that's what he wanted to do. Um, and he got... Um, Goldman Sachs to help him do this by setting up an entity called Abacus. And uh, doing business through that entity with a German bank called IKB. And here's how the thing worked. Okay, Abacus wrote this. Okay, so Abacus uh, took the other side of that CDS contract there. They're taking on the credit risk, right? They're the ones who are exposed. It, this is like owning a residential mortgage-backed security, except they didn't own anything. It's just a side bet. Okay, and then they went to IKB, and they said, um, we are going to sell you, if you'd like, a collateralized debt obligation okay, that's going to give you a long position in residential mortgage-backed securities. Um, and so it's going to give, it's going to pay you over the risk-free rate. It's going to give you a nice, uh, and they, they, and our IKB actually borrowed money to do this at the risk-free rate. But okay, so they bought the CDO tranche, and they use this money to buy treasury bills. Abacus uses this money to buy treasury bills. So, so this is the set of balance sheets. Now let me just be clear here: when you have this exposure here, this combination risk-free securities here, and this. This is like having a long position in mortgage-backed securities, okay? That's what this is. So this is what's called a synthetic CDO, okay? Meaning that the Abacus didn't actually own any, any mortgage-backed securities at all, okay? But it had manufactured exposure on mortgage-backed securities, and it sold this to IKB as if there were actual mortgage-backed securities on this side, but there weren't. There were no mortgage-backed securities. There's this side bet on mortgage-backed securities that's giving this exposure, and that side bet is with Paulson. Okay. So when these CDO tranches go down, okay, okay, what happens? Okay, the CDS goes up. Okay. Okay, and these T-bills get transferred to Paulson, okay, as payment for this, as margin payment, okay. What IKB did, okay, is essentially, you know, shift the entire value. So, so he could, so Paulson, when these things went to zero, okay, there was no problem getting your money from IKB. This is the key point from a liquidity perspective. When the CDO tranches went to zero, they just went to zero here. There was no problem of IKB getting IKB to pay you because IKB had paid everything up front. IKB had paid everything up front, 100% up front. It was set up so that there would be no problem getting paid if, if these things went to zero because the money was already there in risk-free securities and you just had to transfer it. Okay, so there's some issue. Paulson was involved, or Abacus was involved in choosing tranches that were most likely to default, and 
things like that. Okay, you probably heard about, heard about that. And it was Goldman Sachs that was involved in setting up Abacus and, and making representations in, you know, implicit, explicit, whatever. Anyway, they paid a fine. Um, here again, I think we have to appreciate that, remember who it was that had to bail out IKB, okay? It was the German government. This is a, this is a, German, a German bank. Again, I think for, for the case I was talking about before, okay, where uh, AIG, the question was, what are we going to do with, this, with, this, with the AIG's failure? Okay, well, who were its counterparties? Societe Generale, big French bank, okay, was just like Goldman Sachs. So there's international aspects of this. From a money view point of view, the reason I'm giving you this example is, again, to appreciate that the genius, if you will, of Abacus, okay, was to set it up so that there would not be any problem getting paid. You would not have to, you know, send a big bill to IKB and they could say, but wait a minute, you know, you ripped us off, we're not going to pay you, we're going to dispute this. No. He got his money, okay, and, there, and, and then there was suits afterwards and some, some of the money was, you know, there were, there were, there were, there were payments about misrepresentation, um, but there was no issue of getting the payment. It was set up at the beginning, okay, to make sure that you had treasury bills here, okay. You didn't have to liquidate a CDS, you know, a, a residential mortgage-backed security exposure. You had treasury bills.